Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Dell challenges the status quo, questions everything, and empowers you to return to your core beliefs to make your life better. If you're ready to hear the truth and get your roadmap to the lifestyle you really want, the next hour will change your life. And now, your host, self-made millionaire, national award-winning investor of the year, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to the Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Today, my friends, I want to pose a question and then tiptoe around the answer all over the place and see if we can come up with anything. Uh, The question is, why are so many people never going to be successful. What is it? What's keeping them down? Now, what what started this conversation? What stimulated me to bring this conversation to light? And it comes to the fact that yesterday I had three different companies working at my house. And over the last couple of weeks since the freeze, I've had probably 10 different companies working at my house. And they each come and they have a crew of people, right? And the crew of people um, are anywhere from let's say 20, 25, all the way up to 50, 55 years of age that have been doing whatever it is they do for their entire life. So I've got a landscaping company there. I've got a second landscaping company that's working on irrigation. I've got a, another company that's trim contractors that were putting back up uh, some wood ceilings that fell down with the freeze. I've got another company that's over there um, redoing my pavers in my driveway. My driveway was all you know, the freeze messed up my, my pavers and my driveway and such. And so all of these companies are working and they're all fighting each other for space to get to the, you know, I can't do my job till you get out of the way so I can do, you know, you do yours and I can so forth, blah, blah, blah. And it's, so I had to be there. It's like you have to babysit these crews. As you watch for the whole day and you sit and watch this, actually I've been watching it now for days and days and days, you start asking yourself, what is the difference between successful people, and people that never get ahead. You know, just what is it? Where does it come from? And it was interesting because my wife comes home with a stray dog yesterday, and so now she's got a dog, and she's running it around on a leash and trying to get it to go to the bathroom and feeding it, and it's jumping and playing and having fun with her. And all of our cats are like, oh, my God, what are you doing? If you make her happy, then we might all have to make her happy. Don't set that bar, that standard so high. And the dog's going, hey, man, let's have fun. Come on, do, 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 do. So it was then that I started asking myself, man, what is the difference between dog people and cat people? And it was interesting because we'll put the cats out in the yard, and our cats are pretty much like dogs. They'll follow you around. We do what we call a walkabout. We'll walk around this whole big, giant yard, and they'll follow us around. But they're on their own. They're, they're independent. And they'll climb a tree, or they'll dig a hole, or do whatever they want to do. But they're just sort of wandering around on the side of where we're at. Whereas this dog, man, this dog is right up in your face the whole time, just right there, you know, just wagging the tail, just excited as can be. And so I looked up, what is the difference between cat people and dog people? Because it's, it's, it's this stimulating conversation is that I'm looking at people and going, why are people so different? What is the difference between successful people and non-successful people? And what is the difference between dog people and cat people? And it's just blowing my mind because I've got all this on my mind, and yet at the same time I'm trying to get all this work done. And I'm just thinking, my gosh, people are different. And then I started wondering something even worse, quite honestly, and that was, can people change? So I spent some time talking to some of the contractors as they took lunch or later on as they took a break and I'd sit and talk with them for a minute or sometimes even when they were doing some work that was mindless and they could talk. And I started talking to them about their lives. I mean, you're talking about grown men that are in their 50s that have kids and grandkids and they're still doing the same stuff they've been doing for 30 years. I haven't grown. In fact, one guy said, I've been doing this for 30 years and my pay hasn't changed. I get paid the same thing I got paid 30 years ago. And you go, wow, that's amazing. So when I looked up the cat-dog thing, it was really interesting because dog people are completely different. Dog people want companionship. They don't want their animal to be smarter than them. They want their animal to be subservient to them. And as I was watching these contractors, I was going, you know, there's a contractor that wants his employees to be subservient. Every other conversation he had with them, I mean, literally, every time they stuck a shovel in the ground, he'd go, now do that right. 
Now do it right. I want this done right. Do this get that plant in there the right way. Get it in. Get it tight. Get it tight. These guys have been doing stuff for thirty years, and uh, during that thirty years of doing this, they've um, you know forgotten nothing. They they know exactly how to do what they do. Yet at this point in time, they're still being told every day what to do. So that's one kind of a leader, right? That is a leader that is a demanding, control freak type leader, and they hire follower kind of people. So those are like dog people. And then there are cat people and cat leaders. And cat leaders don't want to have to tell you what to do all the time. They just want the cat to go out there and do it. That's what's so very important, right? It's just they want intelligent people that you tell them one time what to do and they go do it. They know it's going to get done. When I let my cats out, I know they're going to go outside and they're going to go to the bathroom and they're going to come back when they're ready. You take a dog out, you got to walk it until it goes to the bathroom. In fact, we walked this new dog that she found, and we walked it and walked it and walked it and walked it and walked it. Still wouldn't go to the bathroom. Man. Just strange. But it just kept me wondering, what is the difference between successful people and unsuccessful people? And so I looked it up. You know, usually a good Google search will lend some light on just whatever topic it is that you're looking at, right? And... I, I looked it up, and I got this thing from Incorporated Magazine, 25 Reasons Why People Are Not Successful. And I think it's there really 25 different reasons why people are not successful, or did they just need an article, you know, that came up with a lot of different reasons? And it, it was kind of strange to me that there was somebody that actually sat down and figured out 25 reasons people would be not successful. But then I thought about it. How do you be not successful for year after year after year after year. It's a challenge. It really is. It, 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 it's a challenge to think that people could work for their entire life and never get ahead. So I looked it up, and I'm going to share it with you, share some ideas about it. The first one, by the way, this is from Incorporated Magazine, whatever. It's, it, it's an online article from Inc. Magazine, I think. And the number one it says is, you're lazy. <laughs> That's about as obvious as it can be, right? It's the first and most common reason for someone to be not successful. Laziness. Just don't want to do it. So here's an example. Yesterday, we got down to the end of the day. It was like 4.30 in the afternoon. And that's when these crews knock off. They just, they'll drop their shovel and walk away. Kind of drop off type thing. And um, I, just, I went to the guys and said, look, we, got, we had a half a load of dirt left that we needed to get off the trailer or I was going to lose the dirt, and we had one more bed that we needed to tear out, and then we didn't have to tear that bed out and put it into the trailer, because each time you take the trailer to the dump the trash, to dump all the dead plants, you have to pay for a disload, right? And um, I said, so I'm going to be better off if we just do this now. And I negotiated with the crew to stay after and work. And I said, you give me a price. And they, they gave me a price that was double what their normally hour wage was. And I said, okay, that's fine. I'll pay you double what you're getting paid. And they said, made it very clear. No, now he's going to pay us what we normally get paid, right? And then you're going to pay us double for this extra hour. I said, yes, that's, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get double pay for this extra time, one hour. And they agreed, shook my hand on it. They all agreed. And I went to the, had to go to the store to get some cash because I didn't have cash to pay these guys because they wanted to be paid cash. So I went to the store to get some cash to pay them. And by the time I got back, they were gone. <laughs> they just left. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, I go, wow, well, I don't have to spend the cash. But my gosh, what does it take to just leave a job? Unbelievable. We'll be right back with Del Wamsu Radio Show. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio Show. Today, we're discussing why is it that some people will never be successful. And I am working off an article by Inc. Magazine. It's uh, called 25 Reasons Why People won't have success in their life, basically. So uh, we're on to number number two, because number one was so, it's almost funny to say that lazy is the number one reason why people don't get ahead. You know, I wonder if people actually know when they're lazy. 
if they if they really realize that. And I wonder what percentage of people it is that are lazy. That's an interesting argument. I don't know. Number two is you keep asking yourself, why not me? Uh, speaking of complaining, stop wasting your time asking why others are successful and you're not. In most cases, it wasn't because they inherited wealth or won the lottery. Every person in this world has either gone through or is going to go through uh, struggles in life. And so the little old sorry, sorry me story type thing. And I think that there's a lot of that out there. I see that in the news, you know, um, Right now, you've got the uh, Black Lives Matter situation where it's pretty hostile out there about poor little me. And so when you've got that attitude, and how how bad can that attitude get? Well, a uh, very, very sad situation that um, this gentleman gets killed by the police officer, and the police officer goes to jail. And I thought rightfully so, which is probably for conservative people to say, well, that's terrible you think that, because that going to undermine the police. No, that's not going to undermine the police. I'm thinking about myself on the ground with my knee knee on my neck. And I'm thinking, I don't want to be there. And yes, it might kill me. Yet, when they finally got the verdict that, quite honestly, I feel they should have came up with, they were upset because that wasn't good enough. Because it took away the sorry, sorry, little old me story for them to complain about it. So that just happened to be what's going on in the news right now that it just, it, it just to me, some people are never happy. And they're always looking for the next reason to feel like they're being tread upon. And I don't think you can be successful if you think that way in life. I don't think no matter what you do, you can change all the laws you want and people are still going to be unhappy. They're going to be miserable, if nothing else, if you live that way. Number three, you get stuck in your head. You notice that there's a common theme with successful people. They act on their dreams in, instead of only dreaming and overanalyzing everything. Good point. Goes on to says, as a legend, Wayne Gretzky once said, you miss 100% of the shots you never take. Take your shot, man. Boy, I guess that's true. And as a type B personality, that's a, that's a balance for me. Because type Bs like to get into your head. We like to analyze. We like to go back and forth, back and forth, you know, and the good and the bad and the ugly and analyze it all and procrastinate through an analysis, right? Analysis paralysis, I think they call it. Uh, so... We have logic behind that. We believe that's the way, you know, what is a woodworker supposed to do? Measure twice, cut once. And so they believe that that's the way life should be. To then hear that success only occurs when you take action is where an interesting thing happens. Even though I'm a type B personality, I finally take action. I I analyze and analyze and analyze, but then I just, at one point I go, go. And then you go as far as you can go. And when you can't go any further, you go, man, that's... All the information I have can get me to this point. I am stuck. And I was trying to explain that to people as I was rebuilding my house from this freeze. Everything everything in my yard died. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars of plants died. And I'm putting it all back. I'm not going to go back exactly the way it was because it all died. And I don't want it all to die again. But since I'm coming up with a new plan, I really don't know what to do. And so as I start putting areas in, I put in that area. Then I go, now I've, I've got to know what this area looks like before I can match it. I can't just preemptively design the entire yard. But I've got to go get one part in. Something has to get done. And so I get that one done. Now I know what can happen on both sides of that one. And when I get those two sides in, then I know what goes next to them and so on and so forth. So there's a balance to this because other people... And my wife has a tendency towards this is that just just buy something and stick it here and we'll see if we like it later. Well, then you change everything out three times by the time you finally get what you want. And so there is a balance there for successful people. Number four, you're spending too much time on social media. Whew, man, I don't even know where to go with that one. Other than to say this, when I, for, Facebook first came out and everybody's saying Facebook was the way to make inroads with the world now, I played with it. I have to tell you right now, I don't think I've looked at Facebook more than once a month when somebody, I get little notices that somebody I care about has posted something. I'll go look at that. But I don't post anything anymore. It's a waste of time. It is a total waste of time. In fact, if you think about the problems people get themselves into with social media, the stuff they say that is getting them in trouble with everybody else around them, keep your opinions to yourself. You know, I I used to say something about teaching people about real estate was interesting. I'd say, look, if I were to go out and preach to everybody I met about real estate, everybody would end up hating me. In fact, I tell people that I won't tell you about real estate unless you sign up for my group. Because until you invest yourself into the topic, you really not listen to a thing I say anyway. 
You can go out at night with a group of people, families, and have drinks and dinner and talk about your investments, and it just goes right over their head. They don't care. And it, it, the same thing is true with social media. All that time you spend writing all that stuff, nobody really cares what you have to think except you. And you think because you're spewing it onto the world that you're doing something. You're not. You're wasting time. You could instead stop trying to impress other people with your intelligence and go be successful and impress them with your deeds and not your words. Number five, uh, never finish what you start. Boy, I'll tell you what, that is, that's even a problem for me. I I catch myself in that same where I, I start a project, and this is really true type A personality. You start a thousand projects and finish none of them. And you get bored with them towards the end of the project. At the beginning, you're excited and you're researching it and you're designing it and you're doing whatever. But you get to the end of that project, it just doesn't get done. And so I have to really, really work hard to get to the end of projects and complete them. And what I find is that there's a natural tendency for my personality. I don't know what other people's, but as I get close to the end of one project, I'm thinking about how to extend that project, and I extend it further than what I originally intended it to go, and then I get too deep into it, and then I don't want to do it. And I do that only because I've extended what my real original goal was, because I got too excited about it or whatever it is. And so to be someone that doesn't finish projects, leaving all those loose ends out there, that's a bad thing. That's a real bad thing. All right, so we're going to take a short break. We'll come back and do more reasons why people is failing and see if we can avoid them. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to the Del Wamsley Radio Show. Today, we're discussing an article by Inc. Magazine about 25 reasons why people don't succeed. And uh, we're now down to number six. And six is an interesting one. It says, you don't think a business. And I'd rather redefine what this paragraph is actually covered. It says, you don't think like it's a business. Some people just do stuff. They don't think of the profitability of what they're doing at all. They just do it. Uh, When I was a kid, I played Monopoly by myself. And I would have four different business plans, literally a business plan that I knew when it came to each turn. And it's like there's four sides of the board. So I had four different business plans and there's four different people playing. And I was all four of those people. And when I change hats, so to speak, as I go to the next person, I thought the way that person would think in that business plan. And I found which business plan worked the best for Monopoly. And ever since then, um, I've played Monopoly that way because it wins most of the time unless there's somebody else that thinks the same way and they just happen to get better rolls of the dice. But once I was started buying rent houses, I immediately went out and got a different checking account just to run all of my business money through that checking account. Now, it wasn't a business account per se, because business accounts make you pay a certain amount each month in fees if you don't keep a large large enough amount of money in there. And so I did, and I just got another separate bank account that I ran everything through. That way I could account for everything. So right away, it was whether or not I was making a profit, whether or not I was increasing the amount of money I had in that account, and able to grow my business then. So everything was thought of as a business. Even from the very beginning, I was doing everything from an accounting standpoint through a software program as if it were a business. And if you don't do that, I don't think you succeed. I know people are just, they just wing it. One of the guys I was doing business with, he he came out and worked and worked and worked and worked, did a whole day's work with a crew of people. And I said, well, what do I owe you? He goes, I don't know. I said, what do you mean? You don't know? He goes, I don't know. I said, uh, we're going to have to go figure it out. And I called him up a couple of days later and said, hey, you know, you still haven't given me a bill. He goes, yeah, you're right. Let me get my wife to figure that out and get it over to you. So it ended up being like a week and a half before he actually billed me for the work. And I'm thinking, what kind of a business is it that doesn't know what you owe them? I said, you don't know what a full day crew 
is worth and what you should charge for your crew for a full day. I mean, that's just a basic. I'd have it, you know, you got it by the person. You go, uh, I should have a two-man crew fee, a three-man crew fee, a four-man crew fee. You should know what those crews are worth in as much as you have to pay them and transport them and feed them at lunch sometimes and whatever. You need to know what you need to get for those people. In other words, you've got to think like a business, not just like a laborer. And I think too many people come out of being a laborer. I'm a painter. Now I own a paint company, but I don't know how to run a paint business. You know, I'm a plumber. Now I own a plumbing company, but I don't know how to run a plumbing business. I'm a landscaper. Now you know, I own a landscaping company, but I don't know how to run a landscaping business. I just know how to mow yards and plant plants. And I think that's really where these people fail. They don't think about what they're doing like it's a business. Number seven, you don't believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, then are you willing to make any serious attempts? So the, the bottom line is, if, if you don't believe in yourself, how can you actually be serious about anything? In other words, if you think you're going to fail before you even start, you're going to fail. In fact, there's a saying out there, something like that. Whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. That's pretty much it. So believing in yourself is important. Now, how do you get to believe in yourself? You get to believe in yourself by taking, breaking tasks down into small pieces and doing the first piece. Succeeding, go, wow, okay, I can do this, and go on to the next one. Instead of trying to envision the entire process. How to eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you attack a process? One piece at a time. Number eight, you feel entitled. Boy, I don't know how many people there are. We've got a neighbor who has a kid that's 35 years old and he still lives off the parents. And just to get him out of the house, they bought him his own home. And to get him out of the house, they bought him his own vehicle. And so the first vehicle they bought him, he wrecked it the very first day he had it. The house they moved him into, he destroyed it, partied his brains out and destroyed the house. And yet, he still lives off the parents. Hasn't been able to hold down a job. He's just entitled. And I don't, I don't know how you allow yourself to become entitled like that, to, to believe that you are entitled to do nothing. But people do it. And ultimately... The people who are taking care of an entitled person are going to either just give up, burn out, or die, and then that person's going to lose it all. Number nine, you're obsessed over things that aren't important. Boy, I'll tell you what. I had this guy the other day was working out here in my yard, and they were they were doing something. Well, the guy did it in many different ways, but he was, he was always obsessing. Like, okay, get that, do that, pick that up, do that, move it. And he was obsessing with the little things, whereas the big stuff that needed to get done He would take somebody off a big project that had to get done, like go plant those plants and say, now go pick up all the trash in the yard and blow the yard out. You don't need to blow my yard out yet. You need to get my plants in the ground, man. Um, Don't don't obsess with little things. And so we got to the end of the day. It was funny. He was having them clean up the trash before he actually got them to put the dirt out of the trailer into the into the bed. I'm saying to him, do you realize, I know you're trying to clean up the area, and I know you're trying to clean whatever trash is in the bed, but dude, get the dirt in the bed, then we'll clean up. Otherwise, we're going to clean up, then we're going to put the dirt in the bed, and then we're going to come back and clean up again. And it's going to take twice as long. But he just kept obsessing. This is is what he kept telling me. This is the way we do it. This is the way we do it. So constant obsession. Number 10, you stay in your comfort zone. That's probably a big one. People probably don't want to try something they're not used to trying. And I think a couple of things happen, uh, whether it's your parents or whether it's your spouse. But somebody tries something, it doesn't work, and people ridicule them. At that point, it's over. They don't want to risk the ridicule anymore. So they're not going to step outside of their comfort zone. Now, some people, you know, you got to go back. Is it laziness? Is it fear? What is it? But look, Tony Robbins has this little piece in one of his books. I think it's Unlimited Power. He says, look, you got to look at your circle of influence in life, your sphere of influence, however he says it. He said, if you can step one foot outside of any edge of that circle of influence, that circle doesn't grow just to that side. It grows all the way around. It's an exponential growth growth process. Because if you can do anything outside of what you're used to doing, it now opens up 360 degrees of new stuff for you. And 
So being able to step outside of the comfort zone is a big deal. Number 11, you're not as productive as you could be. Let me see what they say on this. Just because you're working eight or more hours a day doesn't mean that you're actually productive. Yeah, so they're talking about distractions, breaks, spending time talking to people, having a cigarette, smoking, whatever, even though you're there eight hours a day. And I agree, there are people that just piddle the day away. But that isn't even important because if you've got a supervisor or somebody to stay on you, they can push you to do the job. What I think is important is that when you decide what to do each day, you can find things that are work. I was talking to a guy about this yesterday, too. I can say, you know, what I notice is that you find work. You can find work, and then you can just get into your work. And when you get into your work, then you don't worry about your child being sick. You don't worry about your car having a flat tire. You don't worry about um, paying the bills or the taxes or any of that stuff. That stuff all just kind of floats away because you're working hard. You're in the work. And I think that's a problem. I think when you work just simply to blur out everything else, then you're not productive because the most important stuff doesn't get done. I've told you the story about the pickle jar before. If you haven't heard that one, go back and look it up on my podcast. But you've got to do the right things. Do the right things first instead of just doing things. Number 12, you focus too much on money. Well, let's see what they say about that. If you start a business just because you think it will make you a billionaire, then you're doing it wrong. (laughs) <laughs> We're taking a short break. We'll be right back with the Dell Walmsley Radio Show. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio Show. Today, we're discussing uh, 25 reasons why people aren't successful. Uh, it's an article put out by Inc. Magazine. And when we went to break, I laughed at the last one. They said, uh, you're focusing too much on money. And I didn't really understand what they were trying to say as I read their paragraph about the comment, here's really what they're saying. And I agree with this. And that is, if you start a business and you just focus on what you're going to get out of that business, how much money you're going to make, you're not going to succeed. When you start a business, you have to, number one, realize that you're providing goods and services. And the only reason you're making a profit is because you are providing goods and services. And you have to do that in a manner that is better than the rest of the marketplace. So if you focus on money, you're not focusing on quality. I've taken over you know, hundreds of apartment complexes over the years, myself and other people that we've trained to do this. And when we go in there, what we do is we look at what the previous owner isn't looking at, the quality of the life of the tenant. Uh, they call them residents now, which is parsing words, but they they like to call it residence, and they like to say that this is somebody's home. This is where they spend, you know, 80% of their life. Their kids grow up here. You know, their families live here. This is their Christmas and holidays and everything else. This is their life. And you go in and you go, the water doesn't work. Can you imagine not having hot water? Can you imagine having an open sewer line that's backed up and spewing garbage out onto the ground? Can you imagine not having air conditioning when it's 100 degrees outside? And there are apartments like this all over the place. These, what we would call, oh, what do they call them? They call them slumlords. I mean, they're everywhere. Now, it's not all of our people. The reason we make all the money is not because we're focusing on the money, although we have a true business plan in place. But we realize that what makes the difference is a better product. You have to have happy customers. Next, that's not good enough. You also have to have happy employees. And so you have to set up an environment for them to work in. This is their life also. So you have to have customers that are happy intermingling with happy uh, employees. And employees, if they're not happy There's no way they're going to deliver a quality experience for your customer. So the employees have to be happy. And next, believe it or not, 
The third people you need to think about more than yourself is the investors. If you don't provide a return on their investment, then they're going to be unhappy. And the business isn't, it's going to fail. Eventually, it's going to fail because people aren't going to be willing to put up money to do business with you. And again, we have to talk about your vendors, all the people you're buying your supplies from. Are you treating them appropriately? Are you paying them on time? Are you fair with them? Or do you treat them like trash and don't pay them on time? Again, we call all these people stakeholders in your business. And if you focus on the dollar you can take out only and allow any or all of these stakeholders to be unhappy, your business is going to fail. So who do we have to care about? We have to care about our customer, our employee, our vendors, and our investors. And then all of that comes down to us making a profit, and that's ours. It's ours if we do the four other things correctly. All right, that was the focus too much on money. Let's go on to the next one here. Next one is, you're a negative thinker. I think that one's pretty obvious. You meet negative people all the time. Negative people don't ever lead anything. They don't ever go anywhere. They're just negative. It's like we're, we're talking right now, there's so much of this cancel culture going on right now where nobody's talking about what we can do for people that have challenges in this world. There are things we could do to help these people. But no, what we want to do is we want to take them back and make them realize that they have a miserable life. Let's just keep focusing on all of the bad things and the miserable life and not come up with any solutions to fix anything in their life. Well, people do that to themselves even. They keep themselves in the, oh me, oh my, I'll never get ahead, it isn't fair, and they just see the world as failure. And they see themselves as failures. Can't get ahead that way, guys. Number 15, you haven't established goals. Boy, if there's, you know, if you were going to write out a book about why most people fail, take laziness out as number one, take number two as goals. People don't have any goals. I ask kids all the time, what, what's your goal? What are you going to accomplish this year, this month, this week? They have no idea. The average person out there, if you ask them, what is your goal in life, could not give you an answer other than, to exist, right? Now, I read somewhere, I heard somewhere that the only true goal in life is to help other people. Well, the benefit to that belief is that if you help enough other people get what they want, you can have whatever you want. I tell people that all the time. If you help enough other people, you can have whatever you want. They go, well, that's not true. I helped somebody once. Somebody? Once? I got 50,000 clients, guys. I've been doing this for 30 four years. And it's still not enough. It's still not enough. You've got to help a lot of people. I've got, I've had at one time 1,100 units uh, of apartments that I own personally. Now, I own other apartments with other people. But each one of those 1,100 people was my responsibility to make sure their life was great, that they had a great place to live, Because that was my responsibility in that overall picture in their life. And if you can't have a goal to accomplish something, to help other people, to get out in this world and do stuff that makes the world a better place, then you're never going to be successful. And it doesn't matter whether we give you 10, 15, 20, or 25 of these reasons. That, my friend, is probably the most important. So keep in mind why I've said for 34 years, it's not the money. It's the lifestyle. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this station, its affiliates, its management, or advertisers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.